Okay, can you all hear me on conference call? Yeah. Um, also on band, sound check for me. Let me know if you can hear me okay. How's it going, Daniel? Good to see Shut you. <laughs> Still nothing over here? Yeah. How about now? Can you all hear me now? Can you all hear me now on conference call? I can't hear. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see. Okay, so band can. seeing anything pop up for it. Hmm. All right. All right. Hold on. My conference call, folks. While we're getting set up, everybody can start checking in. You know, we do that every time anyway. How is everyone? How are y'all doing? How is your semester going so far? I know everybody's ready for spring break, aren't you? I am, for sure. I need a break. Okay. Can okay. you all hear me now? I can hear now. Okay, perfect. All right. So far, so good. Just waiting until this week is over. I know that's right. Could be better, but we get in there. Okay. All right. Keep your head up for sure. Pretty good. Started to work out again. Okay. All right. Dope. That's good. All right. Anybody graduating? It's it's not uh, often I get a lot of seniors in this class, but sometimes I do. Was that a yes to to me, Kenya? Are you graduating, or is that the yes to the you could hear me? Okay, Faith, you graduating? Okay, just making sure. Okay. Okay, so we have one person. All right. Because we're coming up on graduation season. So uh, for anybody who is graduating or if you know folks who are graduating, remind them about the deadlines and things to make sure they get their paperwork and everything in. Uh, they still have a good month. Uh, I think most of the deadlines aren't until like the end of April, but just to keep that, you know, out there. Not for two more years. That's okay. That's okay. Take your time. Take the time that you need, but get there. Get there. Y'all got this. All right. I'm going to turn this fan on real quick um, because it gets really hot in this room. While I do that, uh, start talking about what's going on in the world around you. What's happening out there in the world? You know, I, I 
was reading this morning and I thought it was funny. I don't know how it came across my screen, but um, we were talking about spending in, in the news, I mean, uh, in the hood news, actually. Is this the right company? Yeah. Uh huh. Just around the world. Oh, okay. Well, I was looking at, you know, because people are, you know, the rappers are spending all this excess money and stuff, and I just thought it was funny because uh, Travis Scott gifted his friend and made back for his wedding gift. And I was like, there are so many other things that you could do with your money than, than gift a friend or made back. You know? Right. That's just, I just thought that was just crazy to me. Right. And cars are actually a, a bad gift to give people. Like, really expensive cars are a bad gift to give people because they start depreciating as soon as they leave the lot. You know, that's, that's not something okay. that's going to be a long-term thing, you know? And it's never a known for sure. Car accidents happen all the time, you know? So expensive cars are, are a terrible, terrible gift. I just thought that was just so crazy. <laughs> right. And then it's your friend on top of that. Right? That's what I heard you say? It was a friend that you're gifting this to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, I would like to be your friend if if that's the kind of gift you're giving out. I'm not going to say no <laughs> that if that's my friend, you know. But but seriously, what kind of things should you be gifting to your friends, right? That's That seems a little, a little extra for a friend. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking something, you know something that 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 they can like like I, I mean a piece of art or something you know sure yeah that, that, that. yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah a piece of art is actually a really good idea right yeah. Yeah. okay uh the u.s has administered more than 100 million vaccines early good okay not sure how to feel about the grammys what do you mean about that what do you mean you're not sure how to feel about the grammys What are you not sure about? Oh, Lord, that argument between Candace Owens and Miss Cardi B about her. <laughs> What's that about? I'm in Louisiana right now because my cousin's wedding was yesterday. Oh, congratulations to your cousin. I love love. That's so nice. So, yes, uh, Miss Cardi and Miss Miss Megan... Right, they they having some some backlash, and then Cardi and Candace Owens been going back and forth, and Candace is uh, talking about suing Cardi and all this. Right? Um, are they doing better than other times? What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. You got to give me a little bit more. Like, what is it that you're asking? What is the context? Where is this coming from? Is there a news article that's attached to this or like a story or something? Maybe something you heard somewhere? You got to give me a little bit more. I have no idea what's going on yet. Okay. So somebody else brought up the uh, Cardi and Candace issue, right? So so what's up, what's up with that? Anybody heard any updates? Where are they at? I know y'all want to talk about it. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> they basically got into an argument on Twitter because I guess Candace Owens felt some type of way about, you know, the Grammys being, you know, it's being more, I guess it's trash now. It's, you know, I guess it's dirty or whatever because of, Cardi B's performance and how, you know, everything went with the performance. And uh, Cardi B decided to bring up the fact that her husband cheated on her with her brother. Well, Candace Owens' husband cheated on her with her brother. Yeah, she had the audacity to comment on how her and Meg was dancing. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can get the get a, a video to play for you. Oh my goodness! From CNN, um, like the Grammys, are they awarding the people that deserved it? 
I guess that depends on what you think the definition of deserve is. So most of these award shows, first of all, like they're not like the people's choice. So they are hand selected. It, it's not like a, it's not like a, um, like the Walk of Fame, for example. Anybody can have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You just have to have like forty thousand dollars and buy one. It's not that special. So most of these awards aren't actually as special as we give them credit for, for that same reason. Most of them are bought. Most of them are, you know, publicity stunts. They're, they're not, like, real awards. They're not real award systems. They sure made y'all believe they were, though, didn't they? No, go yeah. follow the money. Mm-mm, go follow the money. No, all those award shows are rigged, all of them. Sorry. And you know what? And I can tell you, I, I went and um, I tried out for The Voice several times, right? Like, I don't even know how many times I went. Probably like eight or nine times I went. And every time, it's the same thing, right? They're looking for something specific that they've already predetermined that they're looking for. So they're looking for things that don't match up most of the time, right? That's why you get... Um, on these shows, like, the, the random white girl that has this huge R&B voice, and you get, you know, the, the black guys that are doing country soul music, you know, like, you get those weird combos. They already have those scripted when they're doing the auditions. They're just looking for things to fill the sounds they're looking for already. So it has nothing to do with your actual talent. It has nothing to do with your with your work or anything like that. It doesn't even have anything to do with all those sob stories they end up finding, to give everybody is their background stories for all this. You notice that they all have a sad story? Like, all of them. Right? What is that about? That's about ratings. Right? They all end up having some sob story, right? It just fits the script that they've already predetermined. So, sorry if y'all thought that that was real. It's, it's, it's not. <laughs> None of them are. It's just people that are hoping that they are the thing that they're, that they just happen to be looking for this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So my conference call people, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this or not. I hope that you can. Um, we're going to try this out real quick. Values, American traditions, and you're actually actively trying to make children aspire to things that are grotesque. This is a weakening of American society. We are setting the stage, and it feels like we are looking at corrosion, like we are about to see the end of an empire. This is not about diversity anymore, Tucker. It's about perversity. We are celebrating perversity in America. Y'all saw those questions that she was asking? Who owns your shit, right? Did you see that? My bad, there you go. My bad, there you go. My bad, there you go. Hmm? No, I'm not going. Right, the question of who owns your shit, right? Man, right. that's a deep-ass question, right? Yeah. And y'all having... Yeah. 
come to this point now knowing a little bit of the history behind it knowing a little bit of this evolution of how we got to where we are right now y'all really understand why that question stung as much as it did and why this is such a heated debate right because somebody else is going to look at this and say well cardi's rich why does she care mm, because there's so many other things that are go that's going into this right? right the other things is why that matters so much okay Selling the souls to the devil. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, accolades does not equal to does not equate to talent. Right, exactly. Okay. Well this is actually a good point for us to go into what we need to get into today. If anybody else have anything that they wanted to add to anything happening in the world? We got our videos done. <laughs> Some folks got their videos done. I had already planned in advance to actually give y'all a little bit of extra time. Um, mostly because what usually happens is my messages will start blowing up on Sunday night and people forget that I'm not going to respond. But they've only messaged me. They haven't put anything in the, the group chat. So they don't get their questions answered. Then I have a million questions on Monday morning. So I'm like, why do that? I'll just give y'all till Tuesday. Most people are going to want the extra little bit of time anyway. So for those of you that did finish, though, how's it feel? Good. It yeah. feels good? Uh -huh. I'm making it out the hood. <laughs> Yeah, did you find your talent? Yeah, I'm making it out the hood. <laughs> okay. All right. Just don't forget the hood when you make it out. I'm not. We'll come back. <laughs> All right. Somebody said weird. Uh, Shalise said weird. It was harder than I expected. I got an A on the test I rapped about. See? Thank you. It works. There you go. We love to see it. I had to record it three times because I kept laughing. That's okay. That's okay. It, and sometimes the little laughs you get off, sometimes they work too, right? Sometimes you can get away with little laughs on the track. You see artists do it all the time. Don't be afraid to put yourself in there and have a little fun. Yeah, it'll be like that. You're going to mess up. That's okay. That is okay. I realize that rapping is not for me. That's okay, too. That is okay, too. But you know what? You know for certain because you tried. Right? You can't say that you don't know because you didn't try, right? Because you tried it. Okay. Yeah, people be so afraid of this assignment. But I'm telling you, when you get out of your own head and give yourself the space to have a little bit of fun, it's the best thing you're going to do. I cringe to my voice, but I did have fun with it. You know what? A lot of artists don't like listening to themselves. Because you sound different to yourself. Like, the way that you hear yourself speak, and then the way that you hear yourself after you've been recorded, and then replay it, sounds totally different. You know? And all of that sounds different to the way that other people hear you, too. So, so that's why somebody can love your voice and somebody else can hate it. Right? Everything sounds different to everybody. So that's not uncommon. Look at that. Y'all are all artists and you didn't even know it. All right. Any other feedback? Okay. All right, all right. Well, I'm looking forward to listening to them. Um, next class is when we're going to select some random uh, assignments to check out and give you some feedback uh, live. If anybody wants theirs specifically to get feedback live, that's fine too. You can uh, write it down, send me a message. Uh, you can show up to the live and let me know that you want yours done. If you're not sure until you actually get there, that's okay too. Um, but we are going to check out a couple of your projects and get some live feedback in the next class. So I'm excited. Um, I would definitely need a ghostwriter if I was actually to rep. Yo, so 
let's talk about growth, uh, ghost fighters really quickly. Uh, this is a topic that I've been wanting to bring up anyway. What's the difference between a ghostwriter and a songwriter? Flowing on a song is hard. It is hard. Yeah, you gotta find your own, you gotta find your own flow too. Like you can't have everybody's flow. What's the difference between a ghostwriter and a songwriter? With a songwriter, they get the credit, and the ghostwriter. Uh, it's under a full name, like doing business as or something like like that. No. Uh, no. Oh, okay. What's the difference between a ghostwriter and a songwriter? Somebody else, come on, give me a try. What do you think? Think about it. What's the difference? Ghostwriter gets no credit. Artists take credit for the writing. Sometimes, but not all the time. How does that, how is that different from songwriters? Most of us have no idea who wrote half of the songs that we enjoy. That's the same thing as not having credit. Ghostwriter has the actual talent of the artist. Mm. Sometimes the ghostwriter is the actual talent of the artist, though. Y'all just did a whole song. You know the difference. You know what it's like to write a song now, right? Now imagine trying to write a top hit, right? Imagine trying to be an artist yourself, but no one in the industry will give you a chance, right? Because this other artist is hotter than you, so they're just going to give your song to that artist instead and wipe you out completely. Well, they would have paid you for your your work, right? Who, the ghostwriter or the songwriter? The, the ghostwriter. Oh, songwriters are getting paid too. Nobody's working for free. Okay. okay. I feel like the ghostwriter writes your flow. They give you your flow. But a songwriter, when they write you a song, you have to come up with your own flow. Nope. Okay. Ghostwriters are really just writing lyrics most of the time. You as an artist still have to put your own flow onto it. That's why most artists, like, all their songs sound the same, right? Because they have the same type of flow that they're using for most of their songs, right? Same thing with artists that you listen to who are using songwriters, right? It doesn't matter what the songwriter did. They still have to have their own signature sounds. That's what people want to hear. So what's the difference? Why we hate ghostwriters so damn much then? There is not really a difference. The difference is our ideas, right? Our own stereotypes that we've put on artists, right? The idea of authenticity. Thank you, somebody said it, right? The idea of authenticity, that it's not authentic. You can't give an authentic feeling about something if you haven't experienced it. Well, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me that her has experienced all of those emotions that she is constantly singing about and has been singing about since she was 16. Yeah? That's what somebody wants to tell me? No. Okay. Emotions are invented on tracks. Okay. Emotions are invented on tracks all the time. There is no expectation that you have gone through anything that you sing about in any other genre but hip-hop. Think about that. That's a high burden that we put on ourselves. Everything has to be real all the time. When do we get a break from reality then? A man wrote Focus by her about his mom. See what I'm saying? 
See what I'm saying? The intention that the songwriter had for the song is completely different, right? Neo is writing songs for women all the time. You know how many songs Neo has written that are popular on the radio that have never been sung by men? And he's got his own set of, of, of music, right? He's got his own records. So no, emotion is, is invented on tracks. So the idea of ghostwriters is really just another way for us to put ourselves down and say we're not good enough because we're not being authentic enough. Nobody else has this burden of proof on them. What does that sound like? Oh my God, that sounds like the criminal justice system all over again. You are on trial for your authenticity because you had a ghostwriter. That's some of the stupidest shit I've ever heard. So yeah, so now that you are all songwriters, right? Imagine, imagine if somebody were to pick up your song and do it 10 times better than you and offer you a bag every time that song gets sold. You turning it down just because you're not on the track? No. <laughs> so, you're, so you'll be a ghostwriter then, is what you're saying? Well, yep. Okay. Oh. That can give me make it out <laughs> so we do have to do that y'all see what I'm saying here stereotypes right sometimes we create them ourselves too they're not all external I think I think a ghost writers were hated why, why are they hated I mean, because the authenticity issue people think that if you're not writing your own lyrics that you're not really an artist and that you're not good enough uh, that you're not a lyricist or, um, you know, like, you have to uh, get your street cred, basically. You're getting your street cred from your lyrics, right? And so your lyrics is your story. And so your story has to have some shit in it that we want to hear, right? Well, what do we want to hear in hip-hop? Trash. Right? But we know that everybody doesn't go through everything, right? Everybody's lived experiences are not the same. They won't be the same. Right? So it's certainly plausible to think that somebody could have a writing talent and not a talent for recording, right? Somebody could have a recording talent and could be a terrible writer. Famous authors do this when authors share books, right? You ever seen books that have two, two and three authors on them? Why is that? Because they're sharing knowledge, right? They're all adding to the pot for that book, right? Same thing. Sometimes songs have multiple writers to them also. It's not. It's actually not common for songs to have a singular writer because it's constantly in, in revision and, you know, you're getting ears and ears and ears and ears listening and tweaking and doing this and doing that. So songs are a, a lot of development. Um, if somebody took the song I wrote for this class and made it a banger, that would be something. I know, right? Wouldn't it be something? Just remember me, okay? Remember the little people. If anybody get famous off my class, okay? Promise, I'm going to try to stay cute. Okay. So, yeah, that was just a tidbit I wanted to throw out there at some point this semester. It felt like a good time to do it. Um, let's talk about uh, some of the concepts that we needed to talk about from last class, and then we're going to get into uh, white rappers. So, and y'all post last week was certainly interesting. I hope that I lit a couple of fires and made a couple of people angry and all that jazz, right? It did. Okay. But it was a good dialogue. And y'all see how difficult of a dialogue it can be if you're actually thinking about these concepts and not just thinking from an emotional standpoint alone, right? We have to get some balance between our emotions and the reality of the world around us. And so I think that y'all are on a good path uh, starting that for yourselves. It's good to see. It's real nice. Um, all right. So let's talk about cultural appropriation. What does that mean? What is cultural appropriation? What do y'all think? I know you've heard this term at some point before in your lifetime.
what is that? What is cultural appropriation? Something that, something that is okay for one culture to do, but not another. Okay, that's a good start, right? So each culture has traditions, right? They have customs, they have languages, they have styles, right? Things that, that have come directly from them and from their own thoughts, from their own uh, worldviews and perspectives, right? Uh, religions and spiritualities, even uh, trends like, you know, uh, designs and things like that, right? The use of certain fabrics in some places, the use of certain colors in some places, right? We are complex beings, right? But much like the writers of songs, right? Minoritized folks tend to not get credit for the things that they have created, right? So that's when cultural appropriation becomes the term that we start to use, right? So it's appropriating or taking from a culture that is not our own, right? And using it for our own gain, for our own in in advancement or enhancement, however you want to look at it, right? Whatever the thing is that you're using, right? And the purpose that you're using it for, right? With no intention of giving credit where it's due, right? So a great example is when you go to the mall and you see all these like Native American type prints at like Rue 21, right? That's cultural appropriation. You think those, those tribes, whoever they got the ideas from, is getting a piece of that? No, they're not, right? They're not. When you go to, uh, well, a couple of years ago, when you were going to Target for Black History Month, when they started that whole trend of getting that Black History Month line, right? They would have hoodies and bags and books and all kinds of stuff for black people for 28 days, and then they would move them back to the back of the store afterwards for the rest of the year. <clears throat> yeah, I said it. Anyway, a couple of years ago, right, who was getting the money for all of that? Mm, yeah, we said, nah. So this year, what they did was they had a um, like an, a, a contest from HBCUs for artists and things like that to design the hoodies and all of that. So the artists and all were getting credit right on the tags and everything. And I haven't had a chance to check it because I don't think that their, uh, their um, fiscal, fiscal year statements have come out yet. Um, but I want to see where that money goes. I want to know where the money goes. Where is it going? Are those folks getting some of that? Is Was there like a scholarship that was attached to this? Like, how are we compensating this work that was done? Right? That's the next step. Um, so, for us to not appropriate, right, we have an alternate term called cultural appreciation, which is not as commonly used, right? People don't really say cultural appreciation very often. Um, but it is a thing, right? Because there there has to be an opposite, right? There's one or the other. You're either giving credit or you're not giving credit, right? So this is where we're giving credit. So give me some ideas. Where do you see an idea of cultural appreciation occur? And then I'm going to check these band comments real quick while you're thinking about that. So you're thinking about cultural appreciation. Give me some examples of where you think you've seen or um, have uh, have seen in the past some uh, cultural appreciation. Uh, other races trying to appeal to other cultures okay trying to appeal to okay mm, I don't know if they're trying to appeal to other cultures I guess that depends it's pr that might be situational actually because I'm thinking like tourist type um, destinations right they would want to appeal appeal to different cultures for sure that's an interesting one okay i like where that line of thought is going uh like when everybody was on kim k head for wearing braids yes like that that was cultural appropriation yes okay so give me some ideas where do you see cultural appreciation at um black is king by beyonce which actual like designs from I think West Africa and these people put people that created the dances inside the video and everything. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly, right? Black is King is a great example of cultural appreciation, right? 
because she spent time not only learning about all these different cultures that she was uh, utilizing, but was also using, right, paid workers from those regions, right? Paid dance instructors, right? Uh, paid designers, right? Paid artists. <coughs> paid everything, right? Yes, that is appreciation, right? Gave everyone credit for everything that they did. Sidebar, Rihanna was not in Black is King. I'm just throwing that out there for my theory. Anyway, go ahead. Cultural appreciation. I think Jay-Z was in there for like all of five seconds too. Just that like one piece randomly in the middle in the, the, the car. That's about it. And then she had like lines about being mad at him. Just throwing that out there. Just, you know, theories are fun. Uh, when Billie Eilish dedicated her Grammy to Meg Thee Stallion, would that be one? Hmm. I'm going to hold off on my comment on that because the film that we're going to watch when we come back from break is going to tell you exactly what I think about that moment. Yeah. Since people say the Grammys are rigged. Yeah, I'm going to wait. I want you to watch the film when we come back from break first. What else? Give me another one. Cultural appreciation. Um, Michael Jackson's video, uh, it's black, it's white, it's good, yeah, 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 that, you know, you get it. Right. It and for that, for the time, time, right? For the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. He did a lot of that kind of stuff too, you know? Yeah. Like, um, <clears throat> even like talking about like conservation issues, uh, like human nature, the video for human nature, right? There was a lot of, of little things and details that went into that video um, that if you're not paying attention will completely go over your head, right? All of the animals in there, especially that you see right the, the the way in which the tractors are going like it, there was there's the like pieces to this video that are um man just fucking genius right even even today this so you brought up the grammys right there is a piece that i will bring up that dance the tap dances do y'all know where that's from the what dance? The tap dances. The Nicholas Brothers? Yes. Yes. That was what, the I, that was I, a straight like tribute to the Nicholas Brothers from the Harlem Renaissance. His wife, his wife was one of my professors at West LA College. Oh ah, that's how you know that. Yes. <laughs> how cool. Yeah, so I'm actually going to bring up a video for y'all to look at of the Nicholas Brothers because it was just so dope to see, right? And this is the thing that we're talking about when we're, when we're looking at um, black history, right? If we don't know our own history, nobody's going to pick something like that up, right? You're not going to pick something like that up because... You don't even know it exists in the first place, right? So let's show you this. Let's let's look at these Nicholas brothers over here.
see the athleticism that has to go into this though. Y'all see the athleticism in that? I mean, come on. Just incredible, right? That's where Meg Thee Stallion, right? That's where they got that piece from that they were doing. Right? The unison was crazy. Yeah. But the whole tap dance, right? That's cultural appreciation, right? That's cultural appreciation. Even for yourselves, right? Knowing our own history, that's cultural appreciation. So I'll give you this other example. There are African people, right? People from the African continent who hate that black people in America get braids and black hairstyles, right? The quote unquote black hair, hairstyles, the African hairstyles, right? Because we don't know our own history. We don't appreciate the, the history that goes into those braids and the reasons and the, 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 the rhythms that go into them, right? Like some of them were... Uh, some of the styles will, will give you ideas about who people are in their their area, right? So some of them will be like signifiers of royalty. Some of them will be signifiers of if you're single or if you're um, the son or daughter of somebody, right? Or if you're a priest or a priestess. Um, some hairstyles, uh, especially for en enslaved folks, right? Some hairstyles were literally maps to freedom, right? And so if you're getting a style that's emulating that map to freedom, right? Shouldn't you know about that? Right? That's a burden that you're putting in your head. That's why that, that movie Bad Hair, right? As, as trashy as the movie was, right? The movie itself was, was trash and weird at points. Anyway, um, there's a point to this, right? There's a point to the burden that you put into that head, right? Right? So with braids, it's no different because there's a whole history that's attached to them, right? Braids were used to hold food. Braids were used to make sure that your hair was not going to mold because you're not getting proper care and treatment, right? Braids were used as self-care for, for folks who just needed a break, right? And y'all know how painful it is to get your hair braided? I'm tender-headed, <laughs> first of all. I'm pretty tender-headed. Uh, people don't like to braid my hair for that reason can't I can't sit through it like that right that amount of pain people doing that for fun like there's people that fall asleep getting their hair done I don't understand but you know what I'm saying like you, you get it right you're adding a, this level of pain as part of your self-care people do it with tattoos what's different about it people do it with piercings what's different about it right you just find the thing that's for you that's all um, so what about color blindness? What is that? What what is what is color blindness? What does that mean? What do y'all think? 
where you're cool with anybody. Where you're of- where you're cool with anybody. That's the perception, okay. right? That's what we that's what we want to believe colorblindness is. Okay. Not being able to see race because you quote unquote don't see color, don't recognize it. Yeah, right. It's this idea that you just don't see color, right? And you, if you don't see color, that means that you aren't participating in racism, right? That's that's the general idea. Um, you don't see color, you see people, right? Right. That's the general idea. So colorblindness is a is an idea that um, spurred from liberalism, right? And white liberalism, largely, right, folks that are trying to um, not be like their ancestors, for lack of a better method of explaining this, right? These are the folks who are saying, you know what, we understand that enslavement was a bad thing and we want to try to make this up. And so how do we do that? Well, we also don't want to make ourselves feel bad. So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to not see it, right? If we just say it's not there, then it's just not there, right? Is that how problems work? Yeah. That's not, it's not how problems work, right? And so this birthing of the idea of colorism entered a whole new issue, right? With folks who are now refusing to see color and thus refusing to see the issues that come along with color, right? And when we say color, we're not saying just skin tone, right? It's not just about your skin tone, right? It's about the stereotypes that come along with you and the racial identifications that you have, right, based off of your ancestry, right, connected to your nationalism, connected to your ethnicity, right, and so not entirely about just that phenotypical, that phenotypical aspect, right. That's a good reply, too. Say that again? That's a good reply to someone, because I have a lot of um, white friends, and they're asking me now, well, what, what can we do? And we're, yeah. we're dialoguing. Right. That's good, good point. And refusing to see the issue, you just because I, I, I hear that. I'm, I'm not colorblind. I see all colors. And I even say, say that. Mm-hmm. But you, you're not owning your responsibility to look into what you need to look at for, for that, for the black people. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't provide a holistic path to liberation, right? Because holistic requires that we also heal. But we can't heal if we're just going to ignore what we don't want to deal with. Right? Yeah. Anybody who's ever been in therapy knows that, right? You can't heal from anything that you are not willing to talk about that you are not willing to okay. even acknowledge exists. Same issues apply here. So why do we couple these types of issues uh, with the conversation about white rappers then? What do y'all think? Well, I feel like because it's much deeper than this, like, oh, shit, are they, are they allowed to exist or not? You know, if they're allowed to exist or not, it's what that existence perpetuates, like, what do you define as cultural appropriation when it comes to them? What do you define as, you know, them not seeing color and not really appreciating the art for what it is? And that's kind of what I had a problem with when I was reading the responses that really pissed me off, because I was like, damn, black people just can't, you know, black people can't have shit. You have so many different modes to express yourself, and the mode that black people to create, to express their culture that we, at the end of the day, create. It seems like, you know, we have to share, we have to constantly have a discussion of, oh, you know, they can do this, they can do this, whatever, what you do, what you do, we have to constantly share, and it's like, but y'all don't do that. Let a black man seem country like little Nas X. Motherfuckers was, uh, you know, having an uproar and, you know, not wearing a certain brand of jeans because he decided to be you know, a country singer. But yeah. at the same time, Justin Bieber can be nominated for an R&B award. Right. And so that's a common sentiment, right? It's a common sentiment for why folks feel so strongly about, well, this is supposed to be for us, by us, right? Can we have anything to ourselves, right? Well, think about the way this country works. I mean, is that 
really realistic, we don't even honestly believe that folks should have anything to themselves, right? Like, we don't. If you think about this whole push for quote-unquote equality, right? Well, what does that mean? That means space in the same space, right? That's what that means, right? Because we're not going for that separate but equal anymore. So what does that mean? That means that there's a merge going on in this, the, the totality of this space, right? So honestly, it's not even something we actually value. And another rebuttal for that is go back to the beginning of the semester when we talked about the founding fathers of hip-hop, right? What do they think? in that vibe, yeah, everyone's welcome. Right. So in comes the important discussion that we've been having all semester about race, right? Are all white folks white? No, some are just born that way. Hmm. Because I refuse to believe my English teacher is a white woman. Right. I mean, we know all skin folk ain't kin folk, right? I mean, I mean, the whole Breonna Taylor case. Do we have to go into that? We know all skin folk ain't kin folk. Candace Owens, right? We constantly pulling black cards from people. Y'all don't think they pull white cards too? They just don't say it like we do. See, we're, we're very raw with the way that we explain things, right? Because we want you to understand. We want things to be dead. We want it to... I don't want to spend more time on it than I have to, right? So we're very forward. Well, in a very passive-aggressive world, right? They're going to use language that's going to keep you around just long enough and just close enough, right, to be able to use you to, to an advantage when they have to, and to discard you when they don't need you no more. Look at this Trump election. I know y'all saw those videos. They was making fun of them people something terrible. Them people at the rallies. Talking about oh, Trump's yeah. going to win, but they not even planning on voting. Bless their hearts. Y'all saw it, right? What happened to those people? Did Trump actually help those people? Nope. Used as many of them as he needed to to get into office the first time, right? They just couldn't understand how elections work with the whole you have to process a vote thing to get the second round in. But, you know, thankfully so, of course. Um, not that Joe is the best person in the world either, but, you know... We already had the, the, the lesser of two evils. Oh, no, we didn't have that discussion this semester because voting was last semester. Mm, sorry, y'all. I think Joe's the lesser of two evils. I'm just going to... We'll just leave it there. Okay. Um, and you are 100% right on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, don't expect him to help black people. Don't expect equality and magical changes overnight, right? It, it doesn't work that way. None of these things work that way, right? But in a passive-aggressive world, they want you to think that it does, right? Just like they want you to think that the Grammys are celebrating real artistry. It's laughable. Yes, they continuously categorize black artists as urban or hip-hop or R&B. Mm -hmm. can never be pop, country, right. rock, you know. Right. Any of that. Right. Okay. Um, I heard from the rapper Lord Jamar that he believes that white rappers are a guest in hip-hop. Yeah, I think that's a dope way to look at it, right? I think that white rappers should be a guest in hip-hop, right? Absolutely. Because, like we said, we know they got issues, too. Right? We understand the way that this race thing works now. And that it's not just so literally black and white. Right? Like, there's whole systems and structures that go into play here that's so much bigger than any of us even thought to think about. 
right? So yeah, they're gonna have people that have the same issue or similar issues to us, right? They're going to experience oppression just in different ways, right? And for obviously not as lengthy of a time, right? But oppression is oppression, right? Degradation is degradation, right? And any space we leave open for that is also space that we leave open for ourselves to be inserted to. Justice gotta be even, y'all. Okay. So, like, did y'all see uh, The Black Messiah? When y'all watch The Black Messiah, you, you'll see this is exactly what I'm saying too, right? When the Black Panther Party is sharing the mic, right, with the Green Berets and with the uh, the poor white folks, I forget what they were called, um, right? Uh, and with the, uh, who else was over there? I think it was the, the Black Berets might have been over there too, right? But anyway, like, there's this scene where they're all sharing a stage, right? Coming together, right? That's what hip hop looks like to me. This platform, right? Where we're leading it, where our folks are leading it, right? But we're bringing all of the issues that we see, all the similarities and issues that we see, right? And elevating it on that microphone, right? That's how we stop it. But if we keep up with this little rat race and putting little fingers here and there, and that's not gonna do it. Yeah. It's not gonna right. do it. Um, okay, so uh, this part is going to be extra. So y'all are welcome to stay. You're welcome to, to go if you want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a couple of different videos. Okay. Um, some of them are going to be very stereotypical for what we expect white rappers to look like and sound like and act like. Okay. As well as what we expect when we think about cultural appropriation um, of hip-hop by white folks, okay? So that we can be very clear as to how extreme these ideas are when we're thinking about them, when we're saying them, so that we don't utilize that as our baseline or as our norm, right? Just simply by using hip-hop as a platform, that does not necessitate that you are culturally appropriating hip-hop, right? Just using the platform by itself, that's not enough, right? The intention that you put into it, right what you're using it for how you're using it to elevate the audience that you're using it for right the purpose and the reason as well as your own portrayals right what are the the stereotypes that you are feeding into if you are part of this because you are whether you want to admit it or not right whether it's positive or negative there are stereotypes that you're feeding into when you enter this scene right so what are they right so this will give you an opportunity to kind of look at a lot of different things. Um, use the chat box, okay? Use the chat box, and we'll talk about what you see, all right? So I'm going to flip this over. Let me go to... Okay. something to sit behind us so we can stop falling over. Okay, let's look for Oh wait, no, I wanna look for this first.
some of this is going to feel a little cringy. Y'all don't think anything yet? I know y'all think something. I don't know how much she made for that. You should look that up. Why bring country into hip hop? Think about it. You see their hairstyles and everything? That looked like it was from the 90s, right? So hip hop is popping at that point, right? Everybody wants to find the freshest, hottest ways to get their folks involved. This isn't hip hop at this point. This is something completely different. The true meaning to we can't never have shit. Don't 
No, you all didn't. You didn't like her. She didn't teach you how to do it. So, when we think about cultural appropriation, especially when we think about white folks and hip hop, right? That's what we think about. That's the extreme, right? That's what we think about. Now, the last one I'm going to show you. Hold on just one second. Just trying to get some more space on here so I can move this up a little bit. All right. So the last one I'm going to show you is actually um, an episode of a show that used to air. Uh, that is on your syllabus, actually. Do I have your syllabus up? Oh, look at that, I do. So I gave you this video because one of the rappers on this video um, used to be an instructor here at Dominguez. Hey, I'm Talon, and this is Rumpus, and I'm going to show you how to start an online t-shirt business. Let's go. First, go to Shopify.com and start a free trial. Next, create your t-shirt. You can use your own designs or hire a freelance designer. Once you have a design you love, add it to a t-shirt and put it on your store. Now launch your store and start selling. Starting an online t-shirt business is easier than ever with print-on-demand services. Print-on-demand handles your inventory, packaging, and shipping for you. Here's how it works. A customer buys one of your custom t-shirts. The order is then automatically sent to your print-on-demand service for printing. It's then packaged and shipped directly to your customer. With print-on-demand, you can start a business for less money, less time, and less risk. My bad. I was trying to get this thing up for you. Memorize it. I was quite embarrassed. I expect better from you because you are right. As far as search, that's really somebody I don't want to let down. I was like, oh, he's sending Rock away home. I'm gonna lose to Misfit. Now I'm officially the sexy. Now, now, now there's no competition. competitive. If I don't win, I'm sold. I'm a leader. I'm not a follower. I refuse to have to step behind anybody. Got this shit. What's going on? Mm -hmm. I was like, listen, if you go home or if I go home, it's hard. Me and Miss Fit were hanging out when she was here. We want you to go and I have to win this money. It is what it is. Even after the show's over, I'm still trying to seal the deal. I told her that. <laughs> <laughs> Sally seemed fully confident, slightly cocky. And I wouldn't have it any other way because there's nothing I love more than having somebody put their own foot in their mouth. This was the first time I met him crying. I was like 14 years old. There he got me in a headlock. <laughs> ice, ice, baby. Vanilla Ice, he was my childhood hero growing up, and I would not be doing this if it wasn't for him. On Vanilla Ice, he represents everything wrong with hip-hop. I don't know where her head is at. I honestly don't. And that's my whole big thing with Ice, you know, people can say Ice is whack, whatever, man. And he failed in a sense, but I know my next tattoo is going to be on my wrist. Failed to succeed, succeed to fail. She's child too young. I love her. Uh, I think she's skilled, but I think she needs a little self-confidence. I've got the whole failure thing down. Yeah, you got it yep. worked out. I've got the failure thing down for this evening. day yesterday for you, Persia. All right. Today we're going to talk about mic technique, and I brought some OGs with me to talk to you about that. 
And when I say OGs, I don't mean original gangsters. I'm talking about original God body. Give it up for Sadat X and Lord Jamal from Brand New Year. Ellie from New Rochelle, New York. Brand new being known for their pro black message and their music. Sadat X and Lil Jamal. That's kind of who I got my swagger from in 91. Hey. Good sign. It wasn't something I deserved after last night. Two brothers going to take you back into the rec room, and they're going to talk to you about mic techniques, mic control, breath control, and everything you need to know to be a great MC. Let's go. I have to tell you that today's challenge involves y'all going to a real studio. Being a real studio, top of line studio. I I'm anxious, man. I'm anxious. When you get to the big boy studio, understand time is money. Give yourself a distance between the screen and the mic. Depending on what you write, you should know ahead of time certain parts. I might have to take a pause to catch my breath or just verbally flip it. Sadat had a very positive vibe to him. You know, he gave us a lot of good tips, whereas uh, Jamal was. <laughs> Watch your peas, a lot of stuff that slipped through, and uh, just be confident. How do you feel about punches and everything? Do you think you should nail it all the way through on a 16? I like to try to get as much of it as I can, you understand? I need to say something right now. Y'all know who this man is? One of the greatest lyricists of all time. And he's sitting here giving y'all jewels, and it's like, I don't just cast my jewels out like that. I feel like, why are y'all worthy of these truths? Talking to me, man. I was like, whoa. Shorty, you want to be a rapper? Yes, sir. Mm, what is real hip hop? I have my opinion. Me, man, I, I'm an old, I'm an old school soul, man. The staying true to who you are, and not it's not you know it's not necessarily it's not about an image. It's not about grabbing on your nuts and, you know, sagging your pants about staying true to the culture. Sadat and Lord Jamar, they didn't seem overly impressed. Somebody got a ghetto revival or something like that? Who's that? It's me. That's you? What's that mean? Ghetto Revival is a company we, we base in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? We got experienced members of the street. Okay. And what's that all about? It's a company. We got experienced members of the street. What's it about? I don't care who you got. What's it about? It's about the revival. The revival of what? The ghetto. Why would you want to revive the ghetto? The ghetto? <laughs> the ghetto is poverty and pain, especially for black people. You want to revive economically, spiritually, you know what I'm saying? Infrastructure-wise, something but love, my brother. When I hear ghetto revival, I'm thinking that y'all trying to bring ghetto back. Like, y'all want pissing in elevators and smoking crack and like that. Like, nah, man. Hallelujah, holla back. Hallelujah, holla back. Hallelujah, holla back. Okay, what the is that? You know what, I, if it's all right with you and it's all right with y'all, I want to give them an idea of the kind of MCs you are because I don't think you understand this. Like, I cherry-picked all these people. I wouldn't put them on here if I didn't think they had the skills and also the potential to learn the culture. Shamrock, can you give them a little example of how you spit? Put a clock on and I'ma chew your ass up. I never knew what to do with that look. So I took it in my own hands. I'm a grown man. I'm in my own plan. I feel you, like, you know what I mean? Jamar, what he was really doing, I think, is addressing us like you would anyone else, is that they want to be a rapper, a group of people that are aspiring to take his potential spot. He's proven himself time and time again. So, like, you better step up. Virgil, what does Brand New being mean to you? Well, for one, slow down. I had tape in the house. I had to tape in somebody else's house. I mean, I was the girl who was Brand New being. I mean, I took that. That's part of me. That's who I am trying to shine this is a competition right here this is like a prize fight right here so you should already be amping yourself up never let a man hold you back from your goal now make that your aspiration go for your dreams and your aspirations put your plans and activation there's nothing to it just do it you right there can't buy it <laughs> you right there yeah, without question. You guys got a big day, man. I got brand newbie in the night after my bad night. I was just amazed. Peace. I need everybody to go back into their rooms, give me their right sneaker. We're going to split you guys up into two new teams. I'm going to pick a sneaker from the back. Do not move into your team until all eight names are called. All right? Persia, let me ask you a question. You feel like you need to redeem yourself? Yes, very much so. John Boy, Just Ryan, Persia, Team 1. G-Chan, Proof, Sully, Team 2. 
Only two shoes remain. Means second name is on an automatic team. John Brown, team one. Which of course leaves us Shamrock. It's a pretty interesting set of teams. Lyrically, my team was trash. Uh, I really don't want to go to elimination. B, g Underproof, and Shamrock. Our team was not a joke. Our team was something to be reckoned with. This is going to be easy. What happens today in the studio is really going to speak volumes about who you are. you got some good lessons today, and I hope you use them well. I've set up a very, very special guest to work with you. A guy who is experienced in making not only hit records, but classic hit records. He'll be working with none other than Prince Paul. Prince Paul, one of the greatest producers in hip-hop history. Now we were going to get a chance to go to the studio. Make sure what comes out of the studio represents you, because it's a one in a hundred thousand dollar lifetime opportunity. So don't blow it. I can't wait to get in the studio. I'm real excited. There's a first chance to really focus on the aspect of making the music, which I would assume is everybody's favorite part. Team one, you're in the van. Team two, you're in the other van. And of course, we had to let the hood know that there are white rappers on board. We all thought that we were going to a recording studio. It turned out to be a television studio, like, you know, an actual set. We were duped again, obviously. Coming up, the white rappers black out when quizzed about the African-American experience. Black stereotypes that blacks secretly believe are true. Never on time. The winners get a night out with a mystery guest. And the losers do a dirty chore. <laughs> Face elimination. When we walked into what we thought was a studio, we got played, and we was on the set of a game show, like a hood version of Family Feud. We can do this. This isn't a problem. But what does that have to do with me being an MC? Please show some love for our host, the exciting, dynamic Mr. Prince Paul. Yeah. Hello and welcome, party people. We're about to play affirmative reaction. You might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with being an MC? Well, just like in the rap game, this is all about making a connection with your audience. Here's how the game works. We ask a select group of African Americans questions. Your job is to guess what they said. The most popular answers are worth 50 points. The losers are up for elimination. Winners will get this fabulous prize. That's right, Paul. Winners will receive a night on the town with a very special guest. Big up to our lovely hostess, Van and Knight. Looking lovely. Okay, let me introduce you to our studio audience. MCs, can you move this crowd? Hopefully you can see how important it is as artists to relate to the people. Power to the people, by the way. I want to see 100 Proof and Just Ron coming to the podium right now. I need the top terms of endearment for black women. All right? Boo. Boo is actually the number one answer. The blue side takes control. We're going to G-Child right now. I need an answer. Sully. Huh? You have mom? Uh, mm. I use that myself. Sorry about that. Shamrock, you can keep him in the game. Baby girl. Ooh, you got shut down quick. A chance for the red team to take control. Top terms of endearment for black women. Shorty, shorty, shorty. Say shorty. Can I hear shorty? Ooh. Red team, you didn't answer correctly. So blue team, you win that round with 50 points. Let's see what the remaining answers are. Wifey, sister, queen, and last one, goddess. John Brown and G. Child, please step up to the podium. African-American icons whose portraits are most commonly seen on the walls of black barbershops. John Brown. Malcolm X. Let's see Malcolm X. That is correct, and that's the second most popular answer. 
Brown. John Brown gave us the second most popular answer. Can you give me the number one answer? Martin Luther King. Let's see Martin Luther King. Yes, that is the number one answer, G-Top. The blue taste control of the board. Sorry, John Brown, you had it for two seconds. Sully. Frederick Douglass. One strike, blue team, Shamrock. I'm gonna say the godfather of soul, James Brown. James Brown. Let me see James Brown. Cash. Back to you, 100 proof. Cash is clay. Cash is clay. Or Muhammad Ali. Yes, that is correct. You keep them in the game, 100 proof. g Chop. Nelson Mandela. Let's see Nelson Mandela, please. Yeah, sorry, g Chop. Now, it's time for the red team to get it together. You have a chance to steal it. African American icons whose portrait are most commonly seen on the wall shop. And your answer is Marcus Garvey. Let's see Marcus Garvey. Ooh. Blue team won again with 120 points, which totals 170 points. All right, let's see the answers you didn't get. Two options four. The number five answer was Bill Clinton. <laughs> Next set of questions is worth double points, so if you're behind, you have a chance to actually make it back into the game. Sully and Persia. Black stereotypes that blacks secretly believe are true. So, large penises. That is true. Let's see large penises. Number one answer. Sorry, Persia. Persia, I knew you had that answer. I, I, I seen it on your face. Sorry. All right. Blue team controls. We're going to go to you, Shamrock. Never on time. <laughs> Let's see. Never on time. Ooh, sorry, you didn't get that one. That sounds pretty bold. Yo, he's from Atlanta. 100 proof. Black people are the best dancers. Let's see. Black people are the best dancers. Ooh, sorry. Might be true, but it's not on the board. G-Child. Being the best basketball player. Let's see. Being the best basketball player. That is correct. All right, Sully. Police always bothering him. Police always bothering him. Not up there, but it is true. Okay, Red Team, you have a chance to steal this. Black stereotypes that blacks secretly believe are true. What is your answer? Love fried chicken. Love fried chicken. <laughs> that is correct. You win the points. 200 points for the Red Team. They are in the lead now. Let's see the answers you didn't get. Better rappers. Lust after white women. Now, I'll let y'all know this is the last question. So whoever answers this correctly and wins this round, wins the game. John Boy, Shamrock, please step to the podium. The word best used to describe OJ. Innocent. <laughs> Let's see innocent. Ooh. All right, Shamrock, is a chance for you to take it? Nutritious. You said nutritious? That's all I can think of, Prince Paul. All right, let's see. Nutritious. Ooh, sorry, nutritious isn't up there. Both of you get it wrong. So we're going to move on to the next question. Next two people up, John Brown and G-Child. Products most commonly advertised on Soul Train. G-Child. Hair products? Let's see hair products. All right, so... Alcohol? Alcohol. What are you trying to say about black folks? That's what I look for, man. Let's see. Alcohol. No oh, alcohol. Shamrock. Soap. Let's see soap. Ooh, no soap. Two strikes, blue team. 100 proof tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Ooh, tennis shoes. Red team has a chance to steal now. This is a chance to take the whole thing. Products most commonly advertised on Soul Train. What is your answer? Food. Let's see food. Red team, you got it. Fast food was the number two answer. All right, let's see the answers you didn't get. Ford vehicle, vocational school, and United Negro College Fund. The winner is the red team. 
Unfortunately, the blue team will be facing elimination at the White House. Blue team, we can't let y'all bounce without a little something, something. Ain't that right, announcer? Correct, Mundo Paul. The losers of affirmative reaction go home clutching white privilege. It reduces the risk of racial profiling, increases your chance of becoming president. White privilege, the heavenly scent that never goes out of style. The winning team, you win a night out on the town with a special guest. That'll do it here for us at Affirmative Reaction. Now remember, if you're white, you're all winning. Peace, Black America. Coming up, with the looming elimination, G Child's confidence continues to dwindle. It just gets harder and harder each time someone's eliminated. Before the step off, the rappers get to prove themselves in a local barbershop. Running around lap from Boston on my shoulders, stand up. Still gotta bring some more fives. And soon, another piece of white bread gets toasted. Somebody's about to get baked. We won the game. Together, baby, won the game. Yeah, team, yeah, team. The team unity, man. It's people power all day, and that's what hip hop stands for. Woo! Thank God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We lost a firm of reaction on the answer food, which is bull. Now we're up for elimination. <laughs> she was nuts. In the elimination? I don't mind proving myself. That's fine. Proving myself isn't a problem. And, uh, I'm taking the brace head off. I'm scared that our team is up for elimination. I do get down on myself a lot, man. I just don't feel like I'm going to be able to do this uh, elimination thing right. It is not over! Everybody come in the living room, man. Over here. All right, where's my winning team? Winning team. No, 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 you can sit down. Just want to know where the winners is at. All right? I have a very, very special plan for y'all. Of course, to be hot, you have to be surrounded by people who are hot. So tonight, for the winners, I'm going to have you go uptown. I'm going to have you hang with somebody who's created quite a niche for himself in hip-hop. Hot records, hot crew, hot image, hot everything. New York is on fire with his records, even nationwide. You're going to get some good down south, southern cooking. You're going to hang out with my man, hey, Jules Santana. Top down and I'm at it again. It's hot now and I'm at it to win. Jules Santana, he's clearly a beast in the game. Have a good time. Break bread with him. Learn from him. He's a young guy. That's my dude. I'm so heated. As far as I'm concerned, we won that competition. They just answered one question. You want to absorb what he has to tell you, listen to him. Because we got it on Smash right now. And for the losers, wave your hands, losers. Hey! <laughs> Ooh, y'all going to do the winner's laundry. That's right. You're going to wash their drawers, sniff them, scrub them, do what you do. That's what losers do. Shrink them, right. turn them pink. Y'all have fun, man. I'll holler at y'all later. Damn, Joel Santana, yeah. Damn, y'all's draw. Good. I was just sitting there starting out to get the bitch out of here. This had nothing to do with being a MC. How are you gonna send one grown man to do another grown man's laundry? I'm not John Brown's girlfriend. It's very real and about spitting. It's very degrading about my knowledge about black stereotypes. I don't use them because I know real black people. The rules were stupid. Now I'm doing this. Laundry? I don't do my own laundry. How's that? That's corny to me, dog. That's stupid. Sally came off a little cocky. I think he's just a little mixed the nerves for elimination. I think he needs to relax and be himself. I'll do everything. All cool. Thank you. It was tough at first to swallow our fate, but I gotta do a little laundry on my way to 100 G's. Come on now. Right now, he's making business cards, yo. What you know about? <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna make him laugh. We got you. Live it up. Tell him there's some other fire in the house. I hope they don't mess up my clothes. I don't really have a whole lot here. <laughs> these different cycles. You ever done this before? I've actually read something. 
the rest of my team basically told me they'd never done laundry before. Um, I've been doing laundry since I was like 10 years old. The thing you're looking for right now is just how it needs to be washed. And I've did wash day in my life. Too spoiled for this. My parents usually done my laundry. Man, if it weren't for Shamrock, I'd be turning everybody's white to pink. For winning affirmative reaction, my team got to have dinner with Joel Santana at a soul food restaurant in Harlem. About to go get the next white bath. It felt like VIP treatment. We were ushered into a back room upstairs. Oh, what up? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Need a hug. What's going on? Just, how you doing, brother? Nice to meet you. Good. Right. Joel sat at a table. Me and my team sat on the other side, and we just got to break bread. We got all my dudes here. Go. They white people, they white rappers, but it's all good because it's love. <laughs> and he is soul food. So we're going to get some soul into their system. We're going to get it going down, you dig? Joel, somebody who's built so much in so little time, who's been so successful, anything he says, I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> so I just want to know as far as y'all, how y'all feel like y'all going to be able to fit in in this whole music industry. What's up with you, baby? As far as being a female white rapper. I bring okay. heart. Okay, that's what I'm no gimmick. I don't sit up and write about what I see in life. I write about what I do. Well, Rock, I know you're all good, baby. In order for me to keep my cockiness and my swagger, I have to stand by what I say. So what you owe me? I'm bringing that official burb stuff. SUVs, SATs, clean streets, <laughs> big parties, you know what I'm talking about? I like it because you know it's real to you. I mean, it's the burb, it's where you come from. Joel, he's got a lot of magnetic. He just seemed like he had a lot of love. Real cool cat. Shuffles going around. You may see the day we place the deuce, deuce away. Get your praise on. Hip hop dropped first on the block as slave songs on plantations. Holding the dice, rolling, going for broke, hoping I don't end up broken homeless. Okay, they got some heat over here. I'm thinking what's going on. <laughs> so they doing the laundry right there? That boy lost the competition. So they doing our laundry. Losers. Any of the amateurs put in there? Oh, We're girls when I need them. Not cool. Not cool though. Hey, how do I um, do this so it doesn't shrink? I will not win any Martha Stewart Awards anytime soon. Has this even started? I know it started yet. Like a lot of dudes, they run in one lane. You know, they they, they scared to reach out because I cover them bases. Like, you know, I could talk about my grandmother having cancer and just the way I used to love and look up to my grandmother. I could talk about my son. If it's out there for you to reach, touch, and grab, do it. He kind of just said, you go where you need to go. You make your own steps. Don't let nobody tell you no. I was one of them dudes in school. Teachers used to have my moms crying, you know. He ain't going to be nothing. But I always said rapping was what I wanted to do, and I, I put everything into it, and it worked. But only if you put everything into it is it going to work. Who's going to be that final one? And that, that, that's, the, yeah. that's the thing right there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With that being said, from Joel Santana, I wish all y'all the best. Hope y'all enjoyed Amy Roots, that home is so cool. You dig it, it's so Okay. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. Lock it. Lock it. <laughs> I was humbled by the experience, as I've been humbled by the experience of meeting hip-hop legends throughout this experience. I mean, it was great. Hip-hop, man. <laughs> From dinner with Joel, as we made an effort to really humble the situation. I shouted you guys out. I said it was four yeah. of us that couldn't make it here. We were in a fucking hot ass laundromat with a bunch of Spanish people that didn't speak English. I appreciate that. We felt pretty bad for the other team because they're already feeling a lot of stress and depression. They have to face elimination. My self esteem has been kind of low throughout this whole thing. It just gets harder and harder each time someone's eliminated. Going in that room and writing in such a short amount of time, that I think is what's taking a toll on me. G Chuck, she's had a lot of self confidence issues, and I really hope that nobody throws in the towel. Mayo. Mayo, got mayo. You've got mayo. God, y'all look terrible. <laughs>
and a couple of days out your mama's house and you fall apart. So this is what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to schedule it so that y'all can go get your hair done, all right? Get your wigs pushed back, get yourself shaved up, look great, all right? Man, beat it. Come on, get out of here. Fall back. We got a mail message that said tomorrow we are going to head to the barber shop. Well, we'll definitely have some barbershop quartets ready. Hey, what's up? So I don't think I'm gonna go to the barber shop with you guys. You suck. <laughs> Terrible! <laughs> yeah, I'm suck. just gonna sleep, man. I got up this morning and I was throwing up and I'm like having hot and cold flashes. I'm oh, like, she's pregnant. I Who did it? Pregnant. Vanilla ice. Maybe she wanted an excuse to stay home and work on her rhymes. Not really sure what it was. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Take care. I can't see myself not rapping, man. That's the only thing I do. It's the only thing I know how to do best, you know? But hopefully my confidence will grow. We gotta go to a barbershop in the Bronx. Here's some time to soak up some real Bronx culture. We're gonna be able to talk to some people about some hip hop and really get some familiar ground. We're trying to see, you know, how universal we are. I ain't gonna cut you like they do in Boston. And they do a good job in Boston, so I, I hope you do I'm a better. Show you, I'm gonna show you New York style. You don't mind if you spit something for me, right? Oh, yeah. We'll do my hair first. Let me see how I like my hair cut. All right, okay, no problem, no problem. You better come with me, buddy. Don't worry about me, I'll be good. Dude, Jazz kept looking at me like, you better come with fire, you better come with fire. And I'm like, this dude has no idea about when I open my mouth. You never see me trying to be what I'm not, boy. Not a jailbird three hots in the cop, boy. Pure hip hop with a little bit of rock, boy. My whole life I'm floss until it's over. Running around laps with Boston on my shoulder. Stand up. Woo! He got play right there, he got play, but he still got. He gotta still bring some more. He still gotta bring some more fire. I felt like I shot that down. But dude said, okay, 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 okay. And okay is not cool with me. Sully should do a lot better. I think he needs to focus a little more on practicing. They say I curse like I'm hexed and I spit like a dude. I rap my set to my death and I will eat your food. Mm. Ain't no bitch from Queens that ever spit this hard. And I'm first not to give a <laughs> Won't say much. And bitch, I'll lace you where you stand and make your head go Dutch. <laughs> I got a legend in the house. She a beast. Me, I'm from New York, so I have that New Yorkness. They kind of took a liking to me. I'm the hood girl, so everyone take embraces me. Why people say just rhyme, you ain't tight. White people getting privilege and that ain't right. I feel the Black Panthers and what self-defense do. Yeah, whites can ride, but we gotta have sense too. The time is now, the power's ours. Let's get behind the black folks on top of the towers. Definitely just rhyme and AR-15 got some shine in the barbershop. You on the right path right now. This gangster drug, this, 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 that, our youth, we can't come up on that. We gotta come up on a way where this rap is fun again. Just rhyme, he was talking about the struggle, about the people, and about the power of the people. I think that's a hit and miss, though. I think people are gonna feel that. I, what the f are you talking about, white boy? Keeping it real, your man to just spit, fire. You, you fire, my. I'm not saying you whack, but you got potential. But their delivery was just so plain to the point. Just had them dudes ready to go vote for Just for president in 2008. But for some reason, it just wasn't going down for me. My elimination's on the line. G Child, we're home. G Child, we're gonna fight you. Can't hide forever. She knows how small she is, dude. She can hide wherever the she wants. When we returned, she was feeling better, and um, you know, she she got through what she had to get through. I got my hair done, they fixed it up, treated it, trimmed it, put some texture and everything to it. You trimmed the long part too, the hawk? Yeah. I don't feel like I missed out on the barbershop at all. I started feeling better. I just feel deep in my heart that, yeah, I want to win. Be between getting pampered and feeling better, I think she'll be getting better. Yeah, exactly. Yo, you've got mayo. <laughs> Hey, white rappers, listen. It's almost time for one of you to step off. If you want to stay in the White House, you better stop loafing around. Prove you can get that bread, or one of you is going to be toast. Yeah, interesting. Prove you can get that bread. Get that bread. The search was talking about some wild about bread and toast and who the f knows. Everybody can make their little assumptions, but I don't want to go nowhere. I want to stay here.
You better come with the heat. How many real hip hoppers? How many real hip hoppers in the place right about now? team is on the chopping block. It's not a good feeling at all, and it's just going to see what I'm made of. We are here once again on the stoop, getting ready to impeach a resident from the White House. And once again, to judge the elimination challenge, super producer, principal. What's up, y'all? What's going on? Where's the winning team from affirmative reaction? You guys obviously know black culture. I need you to take a seat in the barbecue chairs. I know you must be comfortable over there, especially you, Persia, from last challenge. Feeling kind of good? That's why you took the big chair? Got you. <laughs> right. I need you guys to stand up, please. Somebody's about to get baked. Right here, I have the white bread. On each piece of bread, there's a topic. You're going to have to write about that topic. It has to be original. Shamrock, come and get a piece of bread, man. Okay? White guilt. Sully. White power. White power, baby. Turn around for everybody else. Whitewash. G Chalk. White trash. I'm gonna send you to the ice ice chamber. You guys gotta write an original verse about your subjects. Come out, spit your hottest rhyme because hundred thousand dollars is on the line. Let's go. G Chow has the perfect topic. Yes, she does. That gives her an advantage going in, I think. the biggest tension in the room yet. I mean, when we got those topics, everybody had stepped up their game a lot. My topic was white power. I was aggravated when I seen what my topic was. I can't focus on things. Sitting in that room is hell for me. Like Serge says, this is not a game. It definitely is not. I mean, I'm going to try the best I could, and that's all I could do is try in this thing, man. The eliminations have taken out the weakest person so far. By default, the count's getting stronger and stronger. Given a topic on a piece of white bread from the white bread loaf. I need G Child to step forward. 100 proof, Sully, Shamrock, Gal could fall back. White trash. Well, I'm the G Child. You could look at me and laugh. I'm your typical average piece of white trash. Me and my friends, yo, we hang out on a rooftop, sipping on shops and listening to punk rock. We zip on our skateboards. We can't afford ramps, so we make them out of cardboard. <clears throat> Take your time. Take a deep breath. Got parties every night. We get drunk and fight. Smoking cigs to pass the time because we can't do right. That it? That's pretty much all. Okay. Fall back. All right. 100 proof. Like I'm next. Topic is whitewash. Whitewash. Now, there's a topic that has literally been through the ringer. So I'm supposed to point my finger at all these white singers so we can linger on a topic that's biopic, no doubt. Hello, white rapper. I am what I'm rapping about. Now, okay, you might say the white kids a jock urban dress. But come on, y'all. Polo, Tommy, Lacoste. How y'all dress to impress? But I must confess, one word, Michael Jackson. I mean, he's white, right? He sings and dances. Now, what the hell happened? All right, man. Thank you. Fall back. Sully. White power. White power, what the f- is that? I'm tired of hearing my life's better just because I ain't black. White power is used to make people like me feel guilty. So search for this topic, man, you did me filthy. It's easy as ace king. It ain't a race thing. It's just rich or poor. Take a deep breath, man. Mm-hmm. Wow. That page just went blank. Okay, ready? Let's keep it real. If you don't know the deal, white power is missing from my life still. I hope this is what y'all wanted. I'm putting it on the table. Where was white power? My family had money for a bagel. All right, man, fall back. Okay, Shamra. White guilt. I take this white skin for granted, and it's so f-ed up that I just can't stand it. I ride clean, 20 inch ties, and cops just wave every time I ride by. But if it's two more miles, a brother's pulled aside. I guess he got a ticket. He was just too fly. When I was 20 years old, dog, broke no money, got caught shoplifting, man. Ain't funny. I was stressing like hell. Would I be all right? My black friend said, "Yeah, Shamrock, you white." 
time at full back. He certainly gave us a lot to think about, all of y'all. We're going to take a little deliberation meeting. Y'all can fall back to your room. Tell me what you thought of Jean Chow. I was a little concerned about her hesitation or something. I think she had the easier topic to write on. And she stayed true to her mentor, Vanilla Ice, down to the flow <laughs> and the pattern, you know. Da -da 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 -da. And the obvious is, you know, she couldn't remember her rhyme. What do you think about 100 Proof? I love this flow. I think his energy is really, really good. Sully? Oh, my God. I expected so much more from him. I always expect a lot from Sully because it seems like he's on point. But definitely caught a blank. Yeah, major point. Yeah. Major point. What about Shamrock? I thought what he did was really good, and I appreciate his flow. It was heartfelt. Heartfelt, definitely, man. And, you know, once again, this is going to be a, a tough decision. They tried hard. Yeah. Shamrock, step forward. Paul, what'd you think of his performance? I felt the intensity. It almost looked like if you had a front zone, I thought you was gonna cry for a second. I felt where you were coming from. Tremendous, tremendous performance, man. Fall back, definitely. Let's talk about 100 Proof. You were very confident and comfortable in your old school style, but you're still in kind of the bad, mad, had, sad lane. Sometimes that holds you back in challenges like this where you have MCs who are more on the cutting edge of double syllables and double word play. One thing I like about 100 Proof a lot is energy. You're not falling fallacy to who you are. Man, fall back. You're good, man. I need both of you to step forward and then step together, please. And right now, it's down to both of you, and there's 100,000 on the line. Why should you stay in the house? Hungry. I don't make excuses. I, I up, and that's why I'm standing here right now. G Child, what do you think? All I can say is what's meant to be is what's meant to be. Do you wake up and say, you know what, I can win this? I do. And, uh, you know, recently, I, my self-esteem has been really low, but when I woke up this morning, I was like, I'm going to win this. The thing about you that is really remarkable is you stay true to your heart. You stay true to who you are. One thing I will say, though, you got to start looking deeper for those rhymes. Sully, I, I want to tell you that you're a huge disappointment today. You are prepared mentally to absorb everything and spit it at the drop of a dime. And that's how you've been building and playing this game. And I don't know why you would decide to let it go right now. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And this show ends with the last one left off. G child, I need your sneakers. It's time to step off. Sully, you can fall back. Keep it real, guys. Thanks for bringing me this far, though. Appreciate it. Nah. What really choked me up and made me cry was, uh, I could see in Search's eyes that he, had, he just had, like, this faith in me and that he really didn't want to let me go, you know, but I didn't want to let him down. Love you guys. You too. If I saw my performance tonight, you know, you would just slap my hand and say, you did your best, kid. Did your best. You know, the funniest thing about competition, it brings out greatness. And it brings out great heart. And now it's time to stand on your own. God, have a good night. All right, G-Child, be easy. Previously on Ego Trips, the White Rapper Show. The MCs took their best shot creating their own music videos. But a whack cop. All right, everybody. So I hope that you were able to get something out of this. Um, so this will save, you'll have access to all the conversations that we had throughout this film. Um, again, you know, this is just a starting point for you to really think about some of these issues a little bit more than you would have um, in previous years because you didn't have this much information, not only about hip hop, but about the world around you in general, right? 
You've done so much digging and, and digging into this world to better understand it. So keep using those things here. All right. Um, again, next class, we're going to be looking at some of your projects. I'm going to select some at random. But if you do want your project on display, you can go ahead and let me know. Um, projects are going to be due tomorrow night. OK, so you have until tomorrow night to upload those right in that week nine box. Uh, there's a whole video explanation if you need help with that. But I I'm certain that um, anybody in the group chat who has uploaded theirs will be more than willing to help out self-care. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you all on Wednesday.